Cool, 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 cool. All right. So welcome, guys. Uh, this is a little bit of training uh, to share some information that we've learned, that we picked up at Success Summit number two that happened last weekend. Absolutely incredible event. Um, really, really, really happy that uh, we went there. Um, just, re I just, I was shocked. You know, that was the word I used after the event. You know, sometimes you go and you are pleasantly surprised. Sometimes you energize. Sometimes you inspired. After this event, I was shocked. That's the only word that I could use. It was so different than, from what I expected it to be. It just was absolutely incredible. So that's why I asked uh, my two amazing superstars. Emma and Second. Alice uh, to join me uh, yeah, on because the call my tonight. Um, the is what I will do, I'll ask you guys to mute yourselves. Uh, everybody else except you, from, you can mute it, uh, from Alice and Emma. You guys can keep yourself unmuted uh, for okay. the time being. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and, and, and share maybe some things that we picked up. It would be difficult to share everything what we've learned because it was two days oh, was full so on much. learning but maybe we can just point out a few things that uh, we found interesting that we found the most um, uh, maybe useful uh, with, with other people okay so girls maybe you uh, can start and then I'll, I'll, I'll add some stuff for myself as well you are, well, I can give you one of my biggest takeaways. I can't access my notes right now, but I'll be yep. home in a, in a minute. But yep. one of my biggest takeaways and something that almost all of the speakers said was really about being yourself. Yeah. And it was like not pretending to be someone else, not copying, directly copying someone else, using them as an inspiration to motivate you and get you going, fire you up and, you know, but not, not, being something you're not because when you're yourself you're relatable and when you are yourself people will connect with you and then you don't have to because when you pretend and you're something else at the start you know like bigging up your business and bigging up your income and your um what's the, you know the um i can't think of the word but you know the things that you've acquired because of your income yeah. then when you you're not really there you then have to kind of justify that later on. So if you start out just being honest, genuine yourself, you're already on a good starting place to, to move forward from. And I, that was almost every speaker, I think, touched on that at some point in their presentations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like I think Oscar Wilde said, uh, if you, you don't have to remember anything if you don't lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So very, very true, very true. I, I think that's that's so so powerful, you know, about the fact that we have to um, be ourselves, you know, the best version of ourselves, but but be ourselves for sure. Yeah. Oh, she's getting getting some light now. You see, probably this oh, yeah, street lighting now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, uh, Alice. Um, the refrigerator program technique. What yeah. you Get in what you put. No, what you put in is what you get out. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Don't do shelf help, do self help. Yeah. So yeah, just you know, so many people buy programs, buy books, buy go to courses and they never use the information. So that's shelf help, not self help. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I, like, I like that one. So, All right. So what what I'll do, I'll go through some of the bits that I highlighted in my notebook just a moment ago and then if, if that triggers some of your thoughts, guys, then just feel free yeah, to yeah. sort of uh, interrupt me, etc. So um, I'll go sort of in order, you know, as we went along. So uh, the first thing uh, um, that I really liked was, it, you know, you've heard a saying, knowledge is power, but actually application is power. It's not knowledge that is power. You know, yeah. so many people confuse that and they, and they just become information junkies, learning, 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 no stop, and not using the information, you know, and, and they can be super clever and still broke you know, and, you know, just look at university professors, you know, and you'll see some examples, you know, they've got more degrees than a thermometer and they're not making very much money, you know, uh, doing it, you know. So, so that sort of really, really um, uh, caught my eye when I first saw that uh, or yeah. heard that. Um, then also, you know, the fact that most people over, overestimate what they can do within the next three months or a year 
and they underestimate what, how their life could change in 10 years. Uh, yeah. You know, so there's so many people who um, come into network marketing and they see the big earners and they want to get there tomorrow. They want to be making that money tomorrow. And it's, this business is a marathon. It's not a sprint, you know, so it does take time. If you're not willing to commit, almost nothing will work for you. Um, I can hear somebody quite loud. Let me just go ahead and mute them. Um, I need a mic muted. Yeah, it's just I can't. With some people, you can't actually mute them. Alexandra, Alexandra, if you can mute yourself, uh, that would be great. Great, awesome. That's done. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So basically, um, you know that that was it. The next one, uh, you know, for me was powerful about work-life balance. Since I have two small kids, I have a beautiful wife, etc. So work-life balance always sort of not always, but it has popped up into my head before, where you know I thought, you know, how you know how can you make this business work for you and still have a work-life balance? You know, so um, I like the fact there was a bunch of ladies on the stage who were sharing. Uh, different ideas to that and I like you know about expectations setting the expectations right by speaking to your family you know so if you're brand new in business or you've been for a while but you want to go and crush it you know why not speak to your family yeah. and tell them that hey look this is what I'm planning to do this is where I'm going to go it's going to be tough it's going to suck you know like I follow Ray Higdon a lot and when he first decided to make business seriously he went to his wife and he said I still hear people speak stuff Guys, can you please mute yourself? It looks like everybody's muted, but I can hear some, some noise. Let me just see. What is happening? Okay. So, uh, so, so that was one, you know, uh, speaking to your family and also being present. You know, so when you are doing the business, do the bloody business. Don't get distracted and don't watch, yeah. you know, dancing cats, etc. But if you're with your family, then turn the bloody phone off and spend yeah. some time with your family, you know. Don't try to, you know, uh, blag your way there. Oh, yeah, I'm present with my family. And you're on the phone um, doing stuff at the same time, you know. So, so, uh, so present. focus on that. Um, also, um, you know, children should be your why or anything else for that matter. You know, so some of you might not have kids and go, oh, that doesn't apply. But whatever you do in your life, um, what is that noise? Jesus. <laughs> Whatever who you. Who is? Who is that noise? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody secretly hijacking our our Zoom <laughs> and making some crazy. Stop, stop prepping your food in the kitchen and, crazy and listening on noises. the live. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, whatever excuse you have right now for not doing this business. That should be your reason to do it. That should be your why, absolutely. Whatever reason you have as an excuse not to go to the next training, that's the reason why you should be at the next training. Whatever excuse you have for not doing, it's basically why you should be doing, you know. So, and and really powerful quote was from Fraser Brooks, and for me, which is, wow, I, I wanted to share that right away, was your friends and family won't support you until they see strangers celebrate yeah. you. How powerful is that? Yeah, and, yeah and, that's massively powerful. And, and sharing it is okay. You know, it's like, it's, it, it's, it's whatever. It's like an eye candy. But it's more important, the mindset. You know, if you wrap your brain around this earlier on, if you understand that and you accept that, that, hey, yeah. I know that my friends and family will not support me. They will not cheer me on. They're not going to buy anything from me probably. They're probably not going to join my business until they see strangers celebrate yeah. me, praise me, promote me, etc. So why not roll up my sleeves and go to work so hard that other people will start celebrating me, other people will start, you know, congratulating me, and then my friends and family will go, you know what? You must be doing something yeah. interesting. You know, it's like that's when you get the recognition. That's when you get the people joining your business, etc. You know, so so really, really powerful stuff there, you know. Um I I just wanted to touch on something as well, get a minute, before you move on, was yeah. um, about the trainings and about needing to be there. We really have no excuses in this industry because most of it is geared towards family and children. And often people will say, oh, I, I can't find childcare or whatever. But there were children at the Success Summit 2 event. There are always children at our events. So that's not a, that's not a reason to not go. Yeah, you know, yeah. because it's family-based businesses, 
and you can take your children and who knows they might learn something I mean, your children have been to so many events haven't they and yeah. they're already talking to their friends about building their own business absolutely you know instill it in them young for sure for sure for sure 100 percent, 100 percent. it's so 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 vital um the next thing was Fraser she had you know seven steps to, to success land in network marketing and for me I thought that, that was quite interesting you know <laughs> for those of you who watch my Facebook live you probably already heard these all but I'll, I'll repeat myself anyway you know it's like one be a product of the product you know be using your own products so important you know because if you if you sell a Mercedes and you're driving Ford Fiesta something's not right there you know um speak uh, to upline daily i thought that was a powerful advice you yeah. know like very few people i've ever heard them say that it's so important we all know we need to do that but I, i've never heard somebody actually say it that hey you need to speak to your upline daily you know so and and then I, when you think about it think about the big leaders in the business etc that's what they do you know like i work a lot with irena you know and i see that her do that like who's the top leaders in irena's team and guess what I hear them talking to Irene on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> so success leaves clues, you know, and these things leave clues. You know, um, monthly event, you know, going to an event at least once a month and plugging into some training, etc. Because, you know, this is a lonely business. You know, most of the time you're on your own, you're building your business, you, you're recruiting people, you're selling products, you know, so your batteries will drain. You will get disappointment. You will get uh, at some point where you feel uh, that maybe... Uh, it's not working for you or maybe it's not worth your time or your hassle or whatever. So having, uh, you know, that monthly event where you can recharge your batteries, I think it's so, so, so important. You know, new customer every single month, new distributor every single month. You know, yep. just imagine if you're building a business and the last time you recruited somebody was like six months ago. Like how, like what are we talking about here? Like one person a month, I think it's doable for pretty much everybody. You know, so not getting yeah. one new person in the business every single month, I think it's already like not for your sponsor, not for the team, but for yourself, you, it should be raising flags. It should be like, if, if I'm building, like some of you in this company and you're not building the business, you're just here to use the products or to sell products. Totally cool. Absolutely fine. We'll love you for that. And, and awesome. You know, I'm your biggest fan. High five. Right. But if you are in this business with intention of growing a team and making that passive income and hitting those top levels, and it's been more than a month since you brought a person in the business. I don't know. You should be questioning yourself. You should be having some asking for some help or whatever, because something is not right there. You know, imagine having a shop, you know, you know, starting launching a shop or launching a restaurant and not serving one meal in a month or not selling yeah. a single item in, item in your shop. You'd be like panicking because, oh my gosh, I've got a business and it's not doing anything like I'm going to go bankrupt, right? Now, I know in network marketing, you're not going to go bankrupt because you're not investing money, but still you should have the same amount of urgency about what the heck is going on with my business if I'm not selling anything, not recruiting anybody, what is happening, you know? Yeah. Um, the next one was hear the CEO speak. You know, so really knowing the vision, where, where this business is going, maybe even knowing the industry. You know, like we're going to Las Vegas tomorrow. We're going to attend the GoPro. And one of the big things there, you know, that I always get is the vision of this industry. Because sometimes it's so easy just to look at the things in front of your face and go, well, this is, you know, my company. This is my product. This is my little team. And that's all there is. But when you go to an event like that and, and you see people making $100,000 a month, $200,000 a month, $300,000 a month, when you see people who paid tax for the last year and they paid $4 million in tax and you know, network marketing is a, is a very uh, good industry for paying little tax because we can literally claim for different stuff, etc. So when you see somebody paying 4 million tax, you pretty much know that they're earning big time, right? So yeah. when you see that type of thing, it just gives you that vision. It gives you that understanding that, wow, this is so huge. And we haven't even started it. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. He says, so, so hearing the CEO speak, knowing the vision where your business and your industry is going, I think is so vital if you are in this long term, if you're seeing yourself doing this in the next 20, 30, 40 years, then learning the background about the business, learning you know, the history of network marketing and learning where it's going, I think it's so powerful you know, because then you, you are very grounded. You're very rooted in the business. And the last one was visit the HQ or, or go on an incentive trip. Now, again, you know, you have to qualify for the incentive trips. You can go to the HQ 
yes, you can go there, right? You don't need to qualify to go to picnic. You know, everybody's welcome every single year. But for incentive trips, you know, you obviously you need to qualify for them. But but boy, I tell you, you know, I haven't been on on, on, on a couple of them, and it's just another level. You see the business in a completely different light, and you you know, you, and hey, if you've got an unsupportive spouse you need to qualify for incentive trip and take them with you. Yeah. Trust me, when you come back from that incentive trip, they're not going to be an unsupportive spouse anymore. They're going to be going like, we need to go to the next one. You better work your ass off, right? Because this is like huge, right? We, we're going to do this. We're going to do this big time. You know? so, so yeah, so those are the seven steps to success land. So um, I was going to I was yeah. going to chip in there as well about events and things like that. Um, totally. They like, when you when you've got your success event or things like the picnic that can be enough to keep you motivated as well for the next year so you know when you plug into those things and the excitement of that thing will keep you motivated and excited right it's going to get really dark guys i apologize um but it will keep it will keep you motivated and, and focused on the on your goals for the next year because you you feed off that excitement for a really really long time yeah yeah totally totally yeah it recharges you you know it's like gives you the buzz etc to keep going um another thing that was uh mentioned is work ethic and you know i think that's again uh something that most people haven't got much of or they haven't really put uh, much thought to that you know so uh, it starts with outworking you know you might not be as talented as somebody else you know might not be as charismatic as somebody else or may not be so good looking as me for example uh, right but <laughs> <laughs> right but the fact is that you can always outwork most people you know i remember yeah. a long time ago i heard eric Warris training and he said that i think it was 95% of people in network marketing will not bring more than 10 people into the business Wow. within their career in network marketing. Can you just like, if you compute that, yeah, okay. 95% of people who join network marketing will not bring more than 10 people into the business with, right, through the whole time, right? So, so it's not that hard to outwork other people. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, if I wanted to outwork other people, I'd have to like do 16 hours a day, seven days a week really to outwork. Well, maybe to outwork Irina, yeah. <laughs> but, but not most people, right? So, so, so first step is to outwork other people. If you want a success, you have to outwork other people. You need to speak to more people than others speak to. You need to attend more meetings than others attend to, read more books than others read, except just outwork other people. And what else is new? Every single job, every single career is the same way. If you want to get better surgeon than anybody else, you have to perform more operations than everybody else. If you, have to, if you want to become the better singer than everybody else, then you have to practice more at that garage, you know, uh, you know those, those songs, you know, that you are better. But once you start outworking other people, what happens is then you start outperforming other people. So at the beginning, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. So I might have been in business for eight years. You just joined today. I speak to 10 people, I get eight. You speak to 10 people, you get two. You can still beat me because you can speak to 100 people and get 20. I speak to 10 people, I get eight. You beat me. You make up in numbers what you lack in skill. But when you outwork people consistently, what happens is you start outperforming them. That's where you start getting three out of 10, four out of 10, five out of 10, six out of 10, the results that most people don't get because they haven't put enough practice in. You know, uh, I heard this where they said to be a, a specialist in something, you have to put in 10,000 hours into that thing. You know, so to become a master surgeon, you have to operate for 10,000 hours, right? Which takes years. Uh, to become a singer, you have to sing for 10,000 hours and so on. So network marketing is the same thing. If you outwork other people, that means you're going to do those 10,000 hours quicker. You're going to compress. And that's another thing that we heard from one lady who said the two most important things is consistency and compression, right? So one thing is to stay consistent at it, but you might go, well, I'll do lives and I'll be consistent at doing Facebook lives. I'll do one a month. I'll be consistent. I'll do one a month. You know, it's better than nothing for sure, but it's going to take a long time to get good at Facebook Lives doing one a month. But if you start doing one a day, guess what? You're going to compress that learning curve. You're going to get good much faster than somebody who does one a month, right? So then you start outperforming people. 
then you start outlasting people, right? And that's again, I remember very, very early on in my network marketing career, I was watching a training by Eric Worre where he drew this, the whole uh, conf, like con national convention room, you know, all of these people and a stage at the top. And he said, you know, the next convention is in six months. Half of that room would have quit the business by then. And it will be replaced by new people, right? But the half who came back are earning double now. Then another six months, the half of that half has quit and it's got refilled by new people. But the, the quarter that's remaining, now they're earning four times more. And it keeps going on and on and on as it's reducing because most people are quitting those guys start earning more and more, less people, but they start earning more and more until they are standing on a stage with that check because they outlasted everybody. Yeah. Simple as that, right? So just showing up and not quitting is a huge thing. But when you get results, it's easier not to quit. It's easier to outlast other people because, you know, if you want, like I know I've heard these stories, you know, and Ray Higdon shares these stories a lot where you shared the story about this lady who, I think in, in 17 years, she made $3,000 in network marketing, which means she lost money because obviously with all the auto ships and all the events and everything, she lost definitely money in network marketing. But after 17 years, she became a top earner and now she's a million dollar earner. She's making a million a year, like what most people would never make in a traditional job. So was it worth the 17 years wait to get to become a million dollar earner? If you ask me, I'd say, yeah, you know, mm. so, so sometimes outlasting other people will lead uh, to that. And then the last step after outlasting is out earning, which sort of I've already mentioned, right? So if you're there long enough, guess what? You're going to start making more money than other people too, you know? So, so that's sort of, and, 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 and Fraser, I think said that longevity creates credibility. Yeah. So, you know, um, I see these challenges going on a, a lot. You know, I was on one challenge, you know, 14-day challenge by Ray Higdon. And there's a bunch of other challenges to do with lives, with pictures, etc. And there's a lot of people who go, you know, oh, I'm going to do this challenge. And then three days later, they're gone. <laughs> you know, and so, so when you show up consistently in this business, whether you're doing Facebook Lives or you're attending meetings and sharing those photos or you're attending trainings, etc., you know, the first couple of times you share on your Facebook, oh, I'm in hobbies business, I'm helping people to make more money, etc. Your friends and, 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 and other people on Facebook looking at you and go, yeah, whatever. But when they see week after week after week, month after month after year after year, you still add it, they start going, well, this girl is serious. But this guy is serious. Like, they're not giving up on this thing. They're not quitting. They keep doing, it, right? Like I know a bunch of people who started it, but they quit a long time ago. This one is still going out and that creates credibility. That creates, and, yeah. And I was just going to say there's something in that as well, because recently some two people on the same night said to me about my live videos where I've shared, where I've been at the, um, and the, Mercedes, what are you doing? Where are these people getting their Mercedes from? And it's like people I don't even know are watching me have said to me personally and it's so but because i've been there i've been consistently doing it i've been sharing other people's stuff and i've been sharing my lives Absolutely. it does it creates that credibility and you just have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it even if you don't see results initially exactly and you want i can promise you want you know but what else is new you start going to the gym do you see that six pack right away <laughs> hmm, forget about it you know you're going to be spending months and months and months there before you start seeing any the real results, etc., and everywhere else is the same, you know. So, so don't expect to come in network marketing and it to be a unicorn that you start and boom, you get results right away, right? It doesn't work like that. So, so it takes time, you know, and it's absolutely fine. So you have to again have that mentality, you know. Um, Vincenzo also talk about, talked about uh, Facebook advertising, and again, I'm not going to go too much into detail with that because it is a visual thing anyway. But, but you know. Um, you talked about story-based ads and, and they're great ads, but they're also great posts to use anyway. Yeah. Even if you're not at using Facebook ads to use story-based posts because as kids, we grow up listening to stories and we love other people's stories and reading stories. So story-based ad is usually uh, an, like an article, like a, like a few paragraphs uh, written out. And there's five basically parts to a story-based uh, post. One is a compelling headline. You know, so something that will grab people's attention, right? Two is highlighting a problem. 
you know, so what maybe you, before you joined up Remindly, maybe you had some problem or before you started using a particular product, maybe you had a problem that you'd like to share. Then you shared the discovery or solution. So how you discovered the business opportunity or how you discovered the product, right? The number four is you highlight the benefits of that product or of that being in a home-based business, right? And finally, number five is call to action. Hey, you know, if you're curious, if you'd like to know more, drop me a message or put info in the comments or whatever, right? So that's a, a story-based post and they work quite well. If you pay attention, you'll see a lot of internet marketers using them on Facebook and they pop up as sponsored posts, you know, and you'll have them on a mountain with a family or in front of their Mercedes or in front of their villa or whatever. And then it'll be a huge paragraph of text, right? Um, because it works, right? So, so you might want to use them, even if you don't use network uh, uh, advertising, just use it as, as a post, you know, on, on, on your Facebook profile. With stories as well, and this came up a few times with a few of the different speakers, it was get good at telling your story, you know, because it's your story yeah. is very, very powerful. So share your story and a post, but also share it in a Facebook Live is very powerful. But what you have to do is when you're talking to people is get used to sharing your story. And it's the same, you know, it's the same format with maybe the exception of the headline if you're just talking to people, but it's sharing your story. So your problems and how they affected you, the how you found the solution what happened when you started taking it. So the benefits you received or the results and then, yeah. And also giving them, still giving them a call to action, you know, and, and so it's really powerful sharing your story. Absolutely. And, and what I like, one of the speakers said, the best part is you can't get it wrong. No, <laughs> it's your story, right? So nobody's going to go, Oh, you said it wrong. Oh, you got it wrong. Right? It's your story, right? You can't get it wrong. So it's super cool. Go on live you know, on Facebook and tell about your story or write about your story because you are the person who knows your story the best, right? So nobody can go, oh, you, do, you messed it up. You, did, you didn't do it right, right? Because nobody knows your story better than you, right? Uh, also, we had uh, ladies from um, Mums in Business Association um, who spoke a little bit. And, and really, for me, what, what, what really stuck the most was their, their mission. And their mission is inspire thousands of women daily to step into the life and business they dream of, right? And, and it's a super cool uh, mission, et cetera. And, and they have a Facebook group where they share loads of important information and then they sell courses to those women. It's a business basically anyway. But, but really what, 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 what struck my mind, I thought, well, what if we had the same, that type of mission? You know, instead of my mission is to sell some products today or my mission is to recruit some people into my team today, what if your mission was to inspire people to live a better life, yeah. to inspire people to, to become part of something bigger than themselves, to inspire people to join this community of amazing, positive, goal-minded people? You know, what if that was your mission? Would you, would you do your business differently? Would you be more comfortable talking to people? And a big part of that and something I took away from what these ladies said was um, people can buy from anyone. They can go and find your product from anyone else. So why do they need to buy it from you? Why do they need to become part of your team? What is it about you? So you have to make yourself stand out. You have to make yourself special. And if you make that your mission, they're going to be more attracted to you naturally because you've got a bigger, it's bigger than just you. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and just to let you know, guys, we've got about 10 minutes of the training left uh, before we will cut off. So when it cuts off, uh, don't worry, that's the end of it, right? <laughs> we'll like to use like every second of it. So we'll probably talk to like, ah, and then it gets cut. Off. Um, and talking about selling products, uh, again, one of the speakers said, don't share what the product is, what most people do. They go, hey, I've got this product, buy from this product. It's amazing product, 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 right? Instead, share what it does. And same with your business. Don't tell people what it is. Hey, I'm in a network marketing, join my network marketing. But instead, tell people what it does. You know, instead of I recruit people into network marketing business, maybe I help people to have time freedom so they can spend time with people that they love instead of spending it in a cubicle somewhere in the office, right? So that's what my business does, not what it is, right? And also, you need to do the selling. If you're on Facebook, you need to do the selling on Messenger, not on your Facebook profile. 
So whether you're recruiting people into your business or you're selling products, you should be going, hey, this is $9.99, please buy, you know, this is my PayPal link, you know, but don't do that, right? Because Facebook is not a, it's, it's not a, you know, like you're not meant to sell there. Instead, you, what you want to do is start a conversation. So you want to do your post in a way that it gets people curious to find out more. So they reach out to you in Messenger or you reach out to them in Messenger after they like yeah. your comment on your post and you do the selling in the Messenger, right? That's yeah. where you tell them how much it costs and how they can get it, etc. cetera, right? Um, we also had a, a, a really, you wanted to say something, uh, Emma? Oh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say something. And it's not quite on track, but I think it's important before people go. And it was about objection handling. And it was something that um, Fraser and Simon Brooks talked about. Yeah. And it's basically your prospect's goal is to get you to answer the questions before you get them to look at the opportunity video. And your goal is to answer those questions afterwards. Exactly. And so a way around that, and we've all got objections, we've all got all sorts of, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, blah, blah, blah. There's so many objections. But if you handle that objection with a question, and one of the reasons I've learned this recently is not because you don't want to answer their questions, but it's because they might ask, for example, if it's a commission-based business, if it's a network marketing business, and you've already got this preconceived idea that they think it's a negative thing, but they might be really excited about a commission-based business or a network marketing business. And you've already written them off because you've gone all defensive. No, 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 it's not, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not. And they go, oh, well, I'm not interested then. So the, the best way to handle that is say, oh, that's a really interesting question. Why do you ask? Is it something you're interested in? And it immediately diffuses that and takes away any assumption that you might have. And, yeah. um, I just, I and thought that that was ready. actually really, really yeah. important. And it's so cool. It's like, it's like, it's like magic words, you know, that Big Al teaches, you know, so it's like, you know, somebody goes, oh, you know, is, is, is this about selling? And you go, oh, I mean, it's interesting that you ask, do you like selling? And whichever way they answer, you go, awesome. If they go like, yeah, I love selling, like, I, I, I love selling, you go, great, you can do a lot of selling here, right? <laughs> if they go, no, I hate selling, etc. Awesome. You don't need to do any selling here. <laughs> right? Because either way, you know, you can show them parts of the business that will either show them selling or not selling, etc. You know, so it's, it's a great, great way. Uh, we also had a guy called uh, Sean Brown. And, and um, one thing I really, really liked from what he said, that a lot of people wait before they start doing something. They wait until the fear disappears in order to start doing something, which is a completely backward way of thinking. Because the fear never disappears. Like if you think that the speaker on the stage has no butterflies in their belly, you are hallucinating, right? Because they do, right? If you think that somebody who's been in business for 14 years, prospecting that person on a bus or on an airplane, don't feel that, 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 that a bit of a, you know, anxiety or a little bit, you know, scared, again, you're delusional, right? Because they do. Like I know leaders who've been in business for years and I've been in business for years and I still get the butterflies in my belly when I go to approach somebody, etc. But it's not about waiting for the fear to disappear before you act. It's acting on it in spite of fear and then the fear disappears, right? So it's, it's like, it's a completely different way of looking at it. So if you're afraid of doing something right now, you'll be afraid of doing it for the rest of your life unless you start doing it. You know, yeah. just that's the only yeah, absolutely. way absolutely there's there's no other way around like whether it's speaking to people on the street or messaging people on, on, on messenger or calling your leads on the phone or doing those facebook lives you have to start doing them and only then the fear can disappear uh and then talking about the facebook lives um you know i i it was interesting the three top reasons why people don't do facebook lives so the first reason they are worried because people will not like their appearance. <laughs> Look at me. If I can do Facebook lives, you know, then anybody can do them, right? Appearance is not a big deal. Trust me. Just look at me, right? So that's one. Uh, two, people are worried what others will think. And actually, if you knew how little other people think of you, that's why you would be very offended. So don't worry what others will think of you because most likely they're not going to think of you at all, which is uh, comforting for some people, right? And then the last one, number three, is people don't know what to say, right? 
Uh, and that's, I think, it, uh, I think is a big one because for me, that was uh, a reason before why I didn't do uh, Facebook Lives consistently because I didn't know what to talk about, right? Yeah. So, so you have to obviously uh, know, you know, have a plan of what you're going to talk about, know the structure, you know, so you have introduction, you tell them what you're going to talk about, then you talk about what you talk about, and then you give them a call to action, right? You have to obviously be consistent, like we said earlier on. But then if you need things to, like, what do I do my Facebook Lives on? First of all, you need to think of, of what topic you're gonna, you, you, your lives are going to go on or what thread they're going to be on or what tendency they're going to be on. So, like, my, all of my Facebook Lives are to do with home-based business and personal development. You know, uh, other people do lives about health and nutrition. Other people do lives about cosmetics and skincare. Other people do lives about lamps, right? <laughs> right? So, so there's different things that you can do your lives on. Whatever you do, it's totally fine because you can become authority in that, in that niche. But once you decided on that, two things. One, you can go to a website called answerthepublic.com. So that's answerthepublic.com. And you, and you can put in... <laughs> Put in any topic, like you can put nutrition or health or whatever, right? And you'll see what other people are searching on Google and search engines to do with that topic. So it might be like how to lose weight or how to eat healthy or what's good breakfast to eat, etc. Right? Once you got those ideas, you can literally go on Google and type in breakfast, healthy breakfast ideas, or ways to lose weight, or you know how to inflate a tire or, or whatever, right? And you'll get loads of blogs and articles of people giving tips, like five tips on healthy breakfast, 10 tips on how to lose love handles, and so on. And you can literally take those articles, consume that content, which means read it, then go on live, turn it live, and go, hey guys, today I'm going to share five tips on how to lose love handles. And I got it from so-and-so's blog. Like I've never, like 90% of my lives are not stuff that I came up with. I take it from Ray Higdon, from there, from there, from there. And I've never done a Facebook Live giving value, giving some tips where I said, hey, I got this from Ray Higdon or hey, I got this from Eric Quirk. I've never ever had somebody go, oh, create your own stuff, you loser. You know, how dare you share, you know, somebody else's stuff. Nobody cares about it because I gave them value anyway. I saved hmm. them time going and finding that information and reading that information. I read it, digested it, and gave it to them on a plate. And they just go, yum, 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 yum. Amazing information. Thank you very much for doing that, the hard work for me, right? So don't worry. Like, I know we said at the beginning, you have to be authentic and you have to be yourself. And now I'm saying, hey, take other people's content and do it. But it's two different things you pretending to be. So, of course, if you go live every time and you go, oh, I just came up with these 10 amazing tips and you actually yeah. you took it from other person's blog, then that's just low. That's just horrible, right? But if you tell people that, hey, I read this book or I got this from this podcast or whatever, totally cool, right? To share it with other people because they probably got it from somebody else and they got it from somebody else. It's, a, it's like, like Irina says, all the words are in the dictionary and you just put them in a different order, you know? So you're, And you're just putting your own spin on it, aren't you? It's not just... It's not about copying them. It's about making it your own and sharing it and sharing where you shared it, where you shared it from. Totally, totally. Because, you know, somebody will go to Success Summit and they will, some things will stuck to their mind. I go to Success Summit, Success Summit, Success Summit, Success Summit. And <laughs> Lots things, of people went to that summit. <laughs> and other things get stuck to my mind, right? So, so the idea is that 